place, side to side, front to back. Why don't we stretch our hands to heaven? Let's pray. Lord, we love you. God, thank you for meeting us here this morning, God. Lord, I pray that you would do something special in this place, Lord. Our eyes are open. We want to see you. Our ears are open. We want to hear you, God. Speak to our situation. We don't know every single situation represented in the room, but we rest easy that you do, Lord. Lord, take this message. Tailor make it exactly for where somebody is. And we give you praise in advance. Come on, all of God's people said. Come on, all of God's people said. Come on, can we put our hands together one more time? Amen. Amen. Welcome to local church, man. It is so good to see everybody in the place. Can we get the the smoke machine turned off? I think the tech team's over here vaping. I'm not sure, but uh, man, it is good to see you in church. I'm excited that you are here. Go ahead and look at your neighbor and say, it feels good in here. feels good in here today. feels really, really good in here, man. You look good too. Tell them you look good too. It wasn't just Easter. Easter, you look sharp, but today, something different, something different. But man, I'm excited that you are here hanging with us this morning. If I haven't got a chance to meet you, my name is Andrew and uh, our church is two and a half months old. And I'm so excited that you are here. Hey, really crucial time in our church. Um, We are coming off a monumental Sunday. Last week at a local church, come on, including kids and adults, we saw over 360 people. Come on, we can clap for that. Amen. Amen. And hey, cooler than any of that, way cooler than any of that. Can y'all believe we saw 11 people commit their life to Jesus? Come on. That's why we do it. So, so, so exciting. But man, the week after Easter, I'm tasked with the week after Easter. If you were here last week, we kicked off a series called There's Got to Be More, a collection of sermons called There's Got to Be More. And we really established kind of the principle that I had to to stamp down before I could even do this series. We talked about this idea that, come on, remember, I have a problem. I need a solution. Jesus is the solution. If you missed that, go check it out. It is pivotal for this series. So go listen to that. But uh, we kind of made the statement, your need is not physical, your need is spiritual. And I was sitting with Naomi this past week and we were watching Netflix and just kind of hanging out. And and I was just like, I had this look on my face and we were sitting there watching, we were watching Special Forces, I think, great show. We're sitting there and I said, babe, I got bad news. She said, what, what you got? I said, I finished my sermon today for Sunday and it's not the one for today. So I wanna challenge you today. We're gonna get super, super practical the remainder of the series, but unless I take care of what we've gotta take care of this morning, none of it matters. And I wanna kinda let let some people off the hook. And here's the thought that kinda like stopped me in my tracks. You can write this down, I'm gonna preach in a second. But it was this idea that a lot of people can never step into what is because they can't let go of what was. A lot of people can never step into what God has for them simply because they can't let go of the past. And my fear, preachers, pastors, churches, is that we talk so much about, and let me finish, don't get mad at me. We talk so much about eternity, and we should. We should talk about that. But we never stop and pause and talk about reality. Because there's a lot of people here, I believe you are going to heaven. You are saved by the grace of God. You got your, your ticket punched and you got your eternity secure, right? But you're living in reality that's bound. You're not free. So this morning, let me let some people off the hook. This message isn't for everybody. This message isn't. Do you know how hard it is at local church to get a message ready that's for everybody? Got so many faces and places and generations and races and different backgrounds and all that stuff, which they said a multicultural and a multi-generational church couldn't happen in Savannah. I think they should check out local church. Amen. I think it looks like heaven. But I want to let some people off the hook. Today, I'm only going to preach to people who have a problem getting past their past. I'm only preaching to people that have a problem getting past their past have a problem letting go of what was so that you can step into what is. And if you don't have a problem getting past your past, we're glad you're here this morning, Jesus. Maybe when we're done, you can show us how to walk on water, okay? But for the rest of us, by the way, don't you're like here and you're like, I'm perfect. Don't ruin it for the rest of us, okay? Leave, okay? We are not perfect. I love churches that have the punchlines. They're like, perfect church for people who are, that doesn't even work for us. We're not even the perfect church, okay? So, but I wanna preach a message. If you're taking notes, write it down. I titled it, Get Past 
your past. Get past your past. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. Speak to us today. We need you, Jesus. Our eyes are open. We want to see you. Our ears are open. We want to hear you. Do what only you can do. We ask in your precious and holy name. Come on, everybody said. Come on, everybody said. Come on, can we put our hands together one more time. One more time. All right. Um, I want to start off with a story. Let me preference this. This story is not about me, okay? I have permission to tell this story, but it is not about me, thank God. It is not about me. It is a mentor of mine. It's a friend of mine. Uh, and let me just take you there, okay? I'll call my friend because I don't want, some of you might know who he is. Uh, we'll, we'll say my friend's name is Billy, okay? Billy's in the fifth grade at this point. Billy is, how do I say? Uh, Billy is a rather, uh, he, he, he's a large child, okay? He's a fifth grade, he's big boned. And um, Billy's in fifth grade, and at this particular school that Billy went to, the way the schedule was set up was they had PE, physical education, immediately following lunch. Okay, I don't know what school administrator did that, but they're probably just like, <laughs> okay, like, like you got physical education right after lunch. And on this particular day, what was for lunch was Mexican food. Oh, it gets worse. I, let's just be, let's be, be reverent, Andrew, be reverent. I don't know what Mexican food does to you, but you get it, okay? So, so it gets worse. So he goes, what did Billy have for lunch that day? Mexican food, okay. He goes to physical education. When he gets to class, I don't know if I remember this. Do y'all remember the president's physical fitness challenge? It's the day with the president's physical fitness challenge. He just had Mexican food. Imagine Billy there, fifth grade. Big little guy, okay, fifth grade, just had Mexican food. And the president's physical fitness challenge today is um, it's sit-ups. Sit-ups. So you remember when you were in elementary school and they'd put you in a line and they would partner you off to go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, right? Billy gets partnered, and I'll, I'll call her this, with Tara Ann. Something you should know about Tara Ann. Tara Ann in the fifth grade was that girl, okay? Everybody had a crush on Tara Ann. Every third, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade guy had a crush on Tara Ann. And my boy Billy is about to perform sit-ups after eating Mexican food while Tara Ann holds his feet. Okay? And Billy's thinking, this is my chance. I'm gonna impress her with such skill and precision. The way I'm gonna do these sit-ups is going to be insane and she's gonna fall in love with me and she's gonna say, you are my man. And I'm gonna say, yes, I am, baby girl. Okay, so, so Billy's there. He lays down. He's getting ready for the, the sit-ups. He just had Mexican food and he's sitting there. And sure enough, the first one, we're good. One. He blows the whistle again. Two. And on the third sit-up, Three, y'all, he parts this girl's hair, okay? Like he, he, be reverent, we're in church, don't laugh, okay? He starts crying, Tara Ann falls to the ground, they call 911, they get her help, right? This, this is true, this, this bothered my friend all the way through middle school. Anytime he'd see her, he'd be like, oh, get off in the lockers, right? High school, same thing, right? 10 year high school reunion at the football game. You know how they do it at the football game with the homecoming type vibe sitting there. And he feels somebody pulling on his shirt. And he's like, what is, who is this, right? It's Tara Ann. And Tara Ann looks at him and says, you probably don't remember me, do you? And Billy says, there's not a day that doesn't go by. That I don't think about the day I almost killed you, right? He definitely played a part in killing some brain cells, right? It's this idea that we all have something in our past. And all oh, that's funny and we can laugh at, at Billy. The truth is most people in this room, you have something in your past that ain't that funny. Better yet, you probably don't prefer to talk about it. It's a season of your life in your past. And let me preference what I mean by past because sometimes we come to church and we start talking about the past. We start thinking about like, oh yeah, 10, 20 years ago. Maybe, but maybe the past for you is like last night. Maybe the past for you was like, Last year, ooh, the last marriage, the last relationship, 2020. What is the past for you? The truth is all of us have moments, all of us have seasons, all of us have those, those times where if we could go back and do it different, we would. It's moments that we wish just didn't happen. We all have those, don't we? Moments we wish 
we could go back. Today, I wanna kick us off with one simple scripture. I'm gonna get to it in just a second. It's 2 Corinthians. If you've got a Bible, you can go ahead and flip there. 2 Corinthians, Paul is talking to the church in Corinth. By the way, Paul talked to the church in Corinth more than any other church. You know why? Because the church in Corinth was jacked up, messed up. Like, like when you're getting drunk at the Lord's Supper, you are messed up. So the church of Corinth is full of jacked up people. I don't know if you know this or not, but the church today in 2024, this church is full of jacked up people. Do you know that? Look at who you're sitting next to and say, you are jacked up. You are jacked up, right? So hey, I didn't tell them what's wrong with them. I just said, tell them they're jacked up, okay? So here we go. Paul is talking to this church. It's about to get really good. He's kind of getting on them a little bit, kind of giving them the business for a moment. But then it's like he stops and he pauses his thought to say this. Watch this, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Watch this. Therefore, if anyone, everybody say anyone. Now, I don't claim to know a whole lot of Greek, but I did do some studying. This word anyone in the Greek means anyone, okay? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old is gone, the new is here. Listen to me. It's not that you were bad and God made you good. It's actually much deeper than that. You were dead and God made you alive. If you don't hear anything else I say, in order to live a life of more, you've got to let go of what was and step into what is. Write this down if you're taking notes. If you don't let your past die, it won't let you live. If you don't let it die, it won't let you live. I don't care how many notes you take in this series. I don't care how excited you get. If you don't kill it today, if you don't let it die today, it won't let you live. And maybe, just maybe, just maybe, there's some people here today that you would be willing today to step out of your history in order to step into your destiny. Because here's what I've learned. When you replay your history, you never move forward. Christians do this. I call it this. Christians, we love to nurse our hurt, don't we? Right? Hey, buddy. I know it hurts. I can't believe the old church did that. Can you believe they said that? Man, I can't believe, oh, the ex, she was so mean, wasn't she? Oh, you want the bottle? And we nurse it. And we feed it. And then we let it grow. So we nurse it, then we rehearse it, though, right? Ooh, y'all ever, ever get home? And you're like, ooh, if I had that argument over again, I'd have been, you know what I'm saying? I would have said this, I'd have said that. Woo, right? You rehearse it. You're like, next time if I ever see them again, ooh, I'm gonna send them a text. We, 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 we nurse it, we rehearse it, and then we get to this place where we curse it, right? I hate that place. I can't believe that place. You've done this too long. You've nursed, you've rehearsed, you've cursed. This morning, here's my prayer with your past. Why don't you reverse it this morning? Why don't you bring it full circle this morning? Why don't you put it to bed this morning? Because it'll keep you from stepping into your calling. It'll keep you from meeting your future spouse. It'll keep you from being the parent you need to be. It'll keep you from not saving your marriage. You can save your marriage and still have a bad marriage after that. You gotta save your marriage and then move forward. I wanna give you some simple thoughts this morning, some simple handles on this idea of getting past your past. They're all gonna come out of this Corinthians verse. Here we go, getting past your past. The first thing you gotta understand is that in Christ, I am completely forgiven. Hey, I got a question. Show of hands, this is an all skate. This has nothing to do with spirituality. Just a question about your current life circumstance, okay? All skate. Who here by show of hands, you drive a truck or I'll, I'll even say like a Jeep, big SUV type thing. Come on, wave at me, wave at me, wave at me. Okay, who here, we, leave it up, leave it up. Your truck, your Jeep, your SUV kind of has like unnecessarily large tires on it. Like you don't really need the tires on it, but you got them. Yeah, 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 ski, I see you, sir. Okay, so when I turned 16, I was so excited. This is, this is so long ago. I got a year 2000 Chevy. Some of you are like a year 2000. Yeah, a year 2000 Chevy Silverado. Had two doors, just one couch in the middle, right? Just one, one bench seat, okay? I'm sitting there. I got these, I had these sweet tires on it. I think they were like, they were the Nitto Trail Grapplers, I think is what they were. I mean, this thing was bad. At least I thought so. It was so bad. And I'll never forget, I went to pick up Naomi, we were dating. She was my girlfriend at the time. And I am backing out of her parents' country club neighborhood. I'm backing out of their driveway. And can you believe somebody moved their mailbox? <laughs> 17 years old, I am backing out of her driveway and boom. And I had the thought, there ain't no way I just hit these people's mailbox I just met. There's no way. 
So I kept going. I just kept going. No, no, no screen. There was no, no reverse screen, okay? I just kept going, right? And sure enough, I put a racing stripe right down the side of my Chevy Silverado. And I know in the South, you get bonus points for racing stripes on certain vehicles. Not this one, okay? And y'all, I could be having the best day ever. I could have a great day at school. I could do everything right. I could be, but the moment I got out in the parking lot and I saw that truck, oh my goodness, made me want to throw up. You ever been there before? Some of you have that in your current life. Every time you think of them, every time you see them, every time you ride by that building, every time you see that business, every time you see them holding hands, you get sick to your stomach. Here's my prayer. My prayer today is that you would let it go. And hear me out. Because some of you are like, Andrew, I get it, man. But like, it's hard to forget. It's hard to believe that I'm forgiven. I get it. I get it because I've been there. You want to know two reasons that we don't often think we're forgiven? Write these down. The first reason we often don't think we're forgiven is because we know who we really are. We know us. Like we do. We know us. Not only do we know everything that everybody else knows about us, we know all the stuff about us nobody else knows about us. We know every single thought we have. We know every single thing that's crossed our mind. We all have this, right? And deep down at the core of our being, all of us ask this question. If they knew who I really was, would they still love me? Oh, here's another reason we don't think we're forgiven. I like this one. We're all on social media. Now look, I'm not the anti-social media guy. I love social media. Social media is a tool. But I got a question for you this morning. Are you using the tool or is the tool using you? Because that's the reason some of you guys don't feel like you can move on with your life, because you're on social media and you're comparing. Come on, moms, moms. Come on, that mom, she's got the perfect life. She's got the perfect job. She's got the perfect children. She's got the perfect Easter family photo. They eat perfect food, right? But what you don't know, right? What you don't know is that it took 77 attempts in order for her to get that perfect picture, right? Women, don't lie. It took you 78 tries, young adult ladies, in order to get that perfect selfie, right? We all know you've got a filter on that makes your skin look clear and your eyes look bigger. You better stop, right? Right? You better stop. Y'all be in the gym trying to get the angles, right? You get in the gym just like, right? Tiptoes, right? I, come on now. Y'all better stop. Right? It's comparison. It's comparison. And the reason I know is because when there's a group photo, guess what? Guess what? What is the first person you look at in a group photo? You. And if you look good, the picture looks good. And if you look bad, take the picture down in Jesus' name. Right? It's true. It's true. So we don't feel forgiven because we know us and we don't feel forgiven because uh, we compare ourselves to other. But I love what Paul says in Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Watch this right here. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. A.K.A. He knows about the addiction. A.K.A. He knows about the abortion. A.K.A. He knows about all of the things, the mistake. He knows about all the stupid things that you did, but yet he still chooses to choose you. In Christ, you are completely forgiven. I wrote it like this in my notes. In Christ, my identity is not found in the dents on my life. I say it like this. In Christ, my identity is not found in my past. My identity is found in the resurrection and the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, right? Um, a lot of you guys grew up in church, so you know the story of the woman caught in the act of adultery. Wave at me if you've heard that story, the woman caught in the act of adultery. If you haven't, it's in John chapter 8. You've got to go read it on your own time, okay? But this story's crazy. I've referenced it before, but this story is wild. The Bible says this woman is caught in the act of adultery. This is intense, uh, they didn't see an Instagram story. They didn't see a tweet about it. No, no. The Bible says she is caught in the act of adultery. They throw her at the feet of Jesus and all of these self-righteous religious people are there holding stones. Can I tell you what I've learned about self-righteous Christians? They all carry rocks. Well, that'll preach right there. They all carry rocks. So they throw this woman at the feet of Jesus. This is crazy right here. Joey, come here for a second. Joey, can I use you for an illustration? Come here. Hey, make some noise for Joey real quick. Make some noise for Joey. Come here. Just hop right up here. Joey's gonna be the woman caught in the act of adultery, okay? Just stand up here for a second. Stand right there, okay? So, so, so they throw her at the feet of Jesus. Just kind of go like this. Just, uh, okay, yeah, there you go. They throw her at the feet of Jesus. But watch the position. Just stay right there. Don't move. The, the, watch the position Jesus takes, though. 
Jesus takes a crazy position right here. Because what we would think is that he would join all the other religious people. You don't have to stand like that, I was kidding. You, you, you think is he would join all the religious people, right? They've all got rocks ready to take their aim, right? Why do churches do that? They used to be in church. You remember when they was in church? They was in church and that's what that is right there. But the position Jesus takes is totally different. Jesus takes a posture of humility. The Bible says he kneels down. He takes a posture of grace. I love this right here. He takes a posture of humility, a posture of protection. And then the Bible says something. The Bible said he reaches down and he begins to write. Uh, remember Passion of the Christ? Remember that movie? It was, the, it, was the, it was the rated R movie. Remember when Christians couldn't go rated R movies and then a rated R movie came out that was about Jesus and then we could all go to rated R movies again? Praise God. Okay, so anyways, right here. Remember, Mel Gibson has him write in the dust. But archaeologists have shown that Jesus would have been in the temple right here, right? King Herod would have had the whole temple marble stoned. So he takes a posture of humility, finger of God to the stone, finger of God to the stone, finger of God to the stone. When was the last time the finger of God touched stone? Sounds so familiar. The Ten Commandments. What is one of the Ten Commandments? Thou shalt not commit adultery. So the same person who wrote thou shalt not commit adultery stood in a position of protection and said, woman, where are your accusers? You have none. Leave your life of sin and sin no more. Demonstrating that in Christ, you are completely forgiven. Come on, make some noise for Joey. Make some noise. Thanks, bro. Completely forgiven. But I'll be real with y'all. I don't always feel forgiven. I'm a preacher. I'm like a professional Christian. <laughs> I do this. And I still don't always feel forgiven, but I've learned something. Write this down if you're taking notes and you struggle with this. I've learned something that the facts of God's word are greater than the feelings in my heart. Sometimes I need to remind myself and celebrate that I'm forgiven. Sometimes I need to remind myself and celebrate the cross. It ain't gotta be Easter for me to celebrate the cross. I need to stop and remind myself and celebrate the fact that he chose me knowing every stupid, foolish, immature thing I would ever do. And I know what some of y'all are thinking. Some of you are like, Andrew, you don't understand the guilt that I have. The guilt that I have is crazy, bro. The guilt that I have at night, oh my Lord. Like I sit there, if I could tell you the amount of times that I've cried, if I could tell you the amount of times that I feel terrible, if I could tell you the amount of times to that person who struggles with guilt, I wanna read you two verses. Watch what Psalm says right here, watch this. Psalm says this, this is, this is 56 verse eight. You keep track of all my sorrows. You've collected all my tears in a bottle. You've recorded each of them in your book. Think about this. Our God, take a step back and look at your life. He collects all every single night you're sad, every single night you hate yourself, every single night that it gets the best of you, every single night that you are ashamed. He bottles up all your tears. Now cross-reference this with Hebrews chapter eight. Watch what Hebrews chapter eight says right here. For I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sins no more. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you saying, Andrew? Write this down if you're taking notes. God records our tears, yet forgives our sins. He records our tears like every single time you fell short, every single time you messed up. The Bible says he forgets about it. He doesn't remember it. But every single time you have that pain and that heartache, he keeps record of it. The sin in this room, the guilt in this room could stack to the ceiling. I know it. Everybody in this room has guilt in their life. But here's what I'm trying to say to you this morning. You need to forget that which God promised not to remember. Hey, if God forgot it, I got an idea. Before you walk out of those doors today, why don't you forget it? Why don't you forget what was and press forward to what is? Come on, if we're gonna clap, we're all gonna clap. If you blaze, we all blaze. I'm gonna press forward into what the Lord has for me. In Christ, I am forgiven. Write down number two, I gotta preach fast. In Christ, I'm not only forgiven, but I'm valuable. I'm valuable. In Christ, I'm valuable. Um, oh man, this has been years ago. I mean, years ago. I was 19 years old, okay? <laughs> Shut up. I mean, this was years ago. I was a sophomore in college. I was playing baseball, and our baseball practice got rained out. I'll never forget it. 
we're in this college town and we pulled up to a gas station. I don't know if we have these in Savannah, but it was a gas station called Clyde's. Is that still a thing? Pulled up to Clyde's and I'm sitting in the passenger seat of this truck and um, I see this guy get out of a car and kind of, uh, he had on a hoodie and this was like, 2011, before people wore hoodies in the summer, okay? Like, this was, this was crazy, okay? He's wearing a hoodie, and he's got a mask on before the, I can't say it, we're on YouTube, but you know what I'm saying, before all of that, okay? Like, this is a crazy day right here. We'll get flagged. Um, this is crazy, okay? And he walks into the gas station, and I had this thought. I'm sitting in the passenger seat. I said, you know, it'd be kind of funny if he tried to rob this place. Not a moment before that I got out of my mouth, I see the guy walk in there and pull out a knife, the dude opens the cash register, gives him all the cash. I can't make this up. The dude runs back to his car, right? Every time I say this story, there's some redneck in the crowd, right? Well, Pastor Andrew, why didn't you tackle him? He said, it wasn't my money, stupid. You know what I'm saying? I'm not tackling him. It wasn't after Andrew's money. He was after Clyde's money. Last time I checked, Clyde's got plenty of money. I'd have carried to the car for him, okay? Just don't kill me, okay? Now, now, if roles were reversed a little bit right here, and he came to me, and he said, Andrew, he said, Andrew, um, give me your wallet. That's where I draw the line. I'm not giving the thief my wallet. You know why? I was, I was 19 years old. I didn't have a lot of money. I didn't have any credit cards. But you know why I wouldn't give the thief my wallet? Because my driver's license was in there. And if he took my driver's license, that means I would have to go to the DMV. And I would rather be stabbed 17 times than go to the DMV, right? It's always somebody that's like, my dad works at the DMV. Tell him to freaking smile every once in a while. Act like you're happy to see somebody, right? But something that has value to me, I'm willing to fight for. Something that means something to me, I'll go after, right? Like, can we all agree, right? Value is based on the price somebody's willing to pay. Can we agree? Value, what does that say about your value? I told you the first scripture we read that he makes all things new. The old is gone, the new is here. Can I tell you how that happened? It happened on the cross. You ever wonder how much you're worth? The Lord sent, God sent Jesus to the cross. That shows your value. Here's something I've learned. I've learned this in life, that God wants to use your entire life. He wants to use all your life. The parts you don't wanna talk about, the parts you're ashamed of, the parts that are embarrassing. What if I told you God wants to take your mess, your embarrassment, and he wants to turn it into a masterpiece? What if I told you the parts that you are so ashamed of, God wants to use? And you wanna know what people don't want when they're going through something? Can I tell you what people don't want? They don't want somebody to come help them that just wants to show them their highlight reel. Well, I got through, you know, look at this, look at this. No, no, people who are hurt wanna be helped by people who've been through something. I think about the Apostle Paul in the Bible. We've read scriptures that he's already said today, right? We read these scriptures. You do know the Apostle Paul, he wasn't always like that. Before this, he was Saul, the persecutor. This is a big deal. Write this down if you're taking notes. What if I told you your pain from your past, the thing that you are so embarrassed of, is actually going to be the thing that God uses to set people free? What if I told you the pain of the past can be your platform for the future? What if I told you that God wants to use the bad? Listen to me right now. The devil should have took you out when he had the chance. He should have took you out when he had the chance. But since he did it, every single time you fell into that sin, you ought to make him pay. This is, listen to me, your test is actually your testimony. Your past, God wants to use. Write down number three, number three, number three. So I'm forgiven, right? I'm forgiven, I'm valued, number three. I'm unconditionally loved. Can I be real with you guys? I don't unconditionally love everybody. And don't judge me, because you don't either, Right? Um, some people who get on my nerves. Um, slow drivers, going the speed limit in the left lane. I don't unconditionally love those people, okay? Right, the left lane's for speeding, for breaking the speed limit. It's in your Bible, okay? Second hesitation is I think what we said, right? It's in there. Oh, you know another person that I can't stand? Don't do this every service, okay? I can't stand close talkers. You know what I'm about? People that wanna come have a conversation with you and they get like right up on you. You're like, what are we doing right now? We need a DTR to find the relationship. You're trying to kiss me? What's going on right now? Stop, right? Don't do that after service, right? I, I can't stand those people. But can I tell you who I don't have a problem loving? My daughters. Paisley and Everly, I have no problem loving them. 
And can I be real with y'all? They've done nothing to deserve it. <laughs> and yours haven't either, right? They've done nothing to deserve it. There's never been one night when they were little babies, right? Where they're crying in the middle of the night and they're like, oh, mommy, oh, daddy. I will delay my gratification of being fed for your well-being to make sure you get six, seven, eight hours of sleep. That's never happened, right? They've done nothing to deserve it. But here's the truth, write this down. I don't love them because of their performance. I love them because of their position. Even when things get messy, even when things get bad. I've spent this morning kind of talking to a specific person uh, who's messed up who's done some things that you're like, man, I'm ashamed of that. Like I wanna live a life of more, but I'm ashamed of it. And I hope you got what you needed with that. But there's also a person here that you're not necessarily the person who did the terrible things that you think about. You're actually the person who it was done to. You're actually the person who was on the receiving end. You're actually the person that you were just at the wrong place at the wrong time and you was caught in the crosshairs, right? You were just that person. Can I tell you something I've learned? Write this down. Unaddressed hurt will turn into hate. Unaddressed hurt will turn into hate every single time. And I know at church, we come to church and we speak our Christianese. How you doing? Oh, blessed and highly favored of the Lord. You know, Billy had a ball game this past Saturday. We're a little sunburnt. Praise God, we're here in church. Praise God. And we get all fake, right? Right? Hey, how you act on Monday at work? I wish we'd switch them because Monday at work, you should act like that. Sunday is actually the time that you can be real for once and let your guard down. Right, so I wanna ask you a question. And when I ask this question, I might get in some hot water, but that's okay. I want you to, to, to think about this. Don't speak Christianese with this. Don't answer out loud either, okay? Um, who do you hate? Who do you hate? I know you'd never say that you hate that person, but I've learned uh, hate has a sound. Hate has a face. Hate has a body language. Hate has a face you make when they walk in the room. Hey, and you're just hurt. You're here and you're hurt. You're here and your past consists of a ton of hurt. Can I give you a nice little Southern point that I think you're gonna like and it's gonna make a lot of sense? Can I give it to you? When you get hurt and you're struggling with unforgiveness, you ready for it? You ready for it? Just stay sweet. Just stay sweet. You're gonna get hurt. The Bible says, like, we're all gonna get offended. Somebody's gonna talk bad about us. Somebody's gonna hurt. You can't escape it. You are not Wonder Woman. And sir, you are definitely not Superman, okay? Like you can't escape it. I heard a story one time about the great boxer, Muhammad Ali. The Bible says, or not the Bible, but somebody said he was, maybe the Bible says it, I hadn't read that part. Um, he was born in an airplane. He was born in an airplane and the stewardess, they were getting ready for takeoff and it's about the time you buckle all the seat belts, right? Buckling all the seat belts, they're born for takeoff. And um, he didn't have his seatbelt buckled. And they said, uh, Mr. Ali, you need to fasten your seatbelt. And he was real charming. He looked back at the stewardess and he said, Superman don't need no seatbelt. And the stewardess looked back at him and said, Superman don't need no airplane. Buckle your seatbelt, right? <laughs> Nobody here's Superman. Nobody here is Wonder Woman. If you come to local church, somebody's gonna hurt you. If you live life, somebody's gonna say something bad about you. It is encouraging. Then you come to church to hear this. Like somebody is going to talk bad about you. Reminds me, this is my closing statement. The band can join me. 2 Samuel chapter 10. 2 Samuel chapter 10 is the story of King Nahash. King Nahash has just passed. He's just, he's just, he's just died. And King David, King Nahash was always very nice to King David. So King David, the Bible says, he sent some of his mighty men to go comfort him and, his, and, and all them, right? King Nahash is dead. King David sends some people to comfort because King Nahash's son is now taking over the empire. So, so his mighty men get there. When his mighty men get there, they, they come in. They're like, hey, you know, we're here to pay condolences. I know King Nahash has passed and we're here to pay condolences. And, and somebody had gotten in the young king's ear. Somebody had gotten in the young king's ear. And when they got in the young king, they said, you really think David is sending his mighty men? You really think he's doing that to comfort you? He's not coming to comfort you. He knows your dad died and he's coming to measure the walls. He's coming to attack. He's coming to do all of these things. He's not doing that. And watch what the Bible says that they did. 
So the son seized David's envoys, shaved off half each man's beard and cut off their garments at the buttocks and sent them away. He's, that's funny, you can laugh if you want to. He shaved off half their beard and cut their skirts to where their butt was showing. That's funny. You want me to illustrate? No, I'm kidding, right? This is crazy right here. I mean, literally, these are mighty men. They go to pay condolences. They didn't come ready to fight. They came to pay condolences and, and to say, man, sorry for the loss of your dad. And the Bible says that they treat him wrong. Write this down if you're taking notes. You can be right in the middle of the will of God and still get wronged. You can serve in church and still get hurt. You could park cars in the parking lot and somebody's going to flip you the bird. You can love people, but if you get caught, I'm just telling you, you can't escape it. You will get hurt. But watch what he does right here. Look at verse five right here. David gets words of what happened. And watch this. When David was told about this, he sent messengers to meet the men, for they were greatly humiliated. The king said, stay at Jericho till your beards have grown back. He said, don't come back yet. Don't come back yet. I know, I know, I know. You got your, your rear end showing. Half your beard is gone. But don't come back. Go to Jericho. Go to Jericho. Focus right here. Everybody focus right here. Go to Jericho. Go to Jericho. Go to Jericho. Don't fire back. Don't tell them how you feel. Don't give them the business. Go to Jericho. Write this down if you're taking notes. Jericho translates the sweet fragrance the sweet place. When you get wronged, remind yourself, I'm going to go to Jericho. When somebody talks bad about you, I ain't going, uh-uh, I'm going to go to Jericho. I'm going to stay in Jericho. Why don't we stand to our feet this morning? Stand to our feet all across this place. Heads bowed, eyes closed, all across this place. All across this place. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Lord, there's hurt represented in this room. There's pain represented in this room, Lord. Lord, we go to Jericho right now, God. Lord, I pray for anybody who's struggling with the past, where they would understand that I'm forgiven, I'm valued, I'm loved for the person who's dealing with hurt from the past. It's crazy what happens when we take the person that hurt us to you. It switches our perspective every single time. Heads bowed, eyes closed all across this place. I got two questions for you this morning. You're here and you wanna live a life of more, but you've gotta move past your past. You're here and you're like, Andrew, like that's me. My past seems to creep up every single day. It seems to constantly come to the forefront of my mind. I'm tired of beating myself up. I wanna step out of my history and I wanna step into my destiny. I've got to work past my past. Would you shoot your hand in the air? I've gotta work past my past. Hands up all across this place. Leave it up, leave it up, leave it up, leave it up. Put it up high. Maybe you're here and you're struggling with unforgiveness. You're struggling with unforgiveness and you know what? I gotta go to Jericho. That was for me, I've gotta go to Jericho. If that's you, would you shoot your hand up? I gotta let it go. Hey, if you raise your hand for either of those questions, I wanna end with a prayer. If your hand's up, would you just join me right here in the altar? Move quick, come on, people are coming, people are coming. Come on, I gotta go to Jericho. I gotta go to that sweet place. Come on, move, we got time, we got time. I gotta get past my past. Man, I'm not gonna let my past, I gotta kill it. My past doesn't die, I don't live. I gotta let it go. I gotta move on. Heads bowed, eyes closed all across this place. Lord Jesus, thank you for the people responding right now, God. I pray that we would go to Jericho, Jesus. Lord, I pray right now that we would move past our past, God. We would put it to bed, put it to rest, Lord. You forgot about it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna remember stuff that you promised me that you won't remember. I'm letting it go before I walk out of those doors today, Lord. Right now, I go to Jericho. Come on, Chris, let's sing a little bit. Come on, if your friend's down here, why don't you step out and pray for him right now. We're gonna let go of our past this morning, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, thank you.